The following program has been sponsored by generous friends and partners of Fred Jordan Missions. Sometimes it takes history a long time to reveal where you get your strength. Thompson and welcome to the Fred Jordan Mission. You know, one of our statements here at the mission is we like to declare and demonstrate. So today that's exactly what we're doing. We've got an amazing lunch, fried chicken, mashed potatoes, gravy, even topped it off with some chocolate cake. And we're about to receive our guests right now. They're in chapel hearing about how God loves them and how no matter what they're facing today, that they are not alone. And we are here to surround them with love. We feel like this is such a privilege because you at home are the ones that help us through prayer and your financial donations that we get to feed these beautiful people this amazing meal. So we've got a lot more ahead in the show. Don't go anywhere. In 1944, my father came to Skid Row and opened Fred Jordan Mission to reach the least of these, to care for those who lived on the streets here in downtown Los Angeles. You know, that's been happening now for 75 years and we continue, why? Because the needs continue to grow and grow and grow some more. And there's only one hope for those who live on Skid Row, only one hope for those who have no hope, and that's Jesus. So since 1944, we've been sharing the love of Jesus with those in need, those less fortunate, those that are homeless, those that are needy. We continue that today, and as we go on to the future, we will continue right here on these streets and then we'll continue to go beyond. This is our Jerusalem, but we wanna to go to Samaria, Judea, and the uttermost parts. And so we'll continue to send teams block by block, continuing to go out until we've reached every lost person that we can within our means at Fred Jordan Mission. As long as there's one soul out there that needs Jesus, we will continue to share the love of Jesus with that person. Well, we're here at Fred Jordan Mission. I'm with Brandon. Brandon, excited that you just came down to serve today. So how did that come about? We wanted to figure out a way to serve and actually to be more intentional about our faith rather than just get together and talk about how we can be better Christians, but actually serve and actually meet people's needs and see how we can be more uh, you know, active physically in doing that. So I'm in the creative field. Uh, I'm a music artist and I also do photography. So I work a lot in Los Angeles and actually, you know, it's interesting because it's a dichotomy. I work a lot in, you know, high fashion world where it's really like superficial and all about material things and even kind of just Hollywood and the entertainment industry in itself. Big contrast between that world and that life just a few blocks away. Yeah. And then the streets of Skid Row and all of the homeless and you know there's numbers that have just come out lately that up to 60,000 people are living in homelessness in Los Angeles, Los Angeles County. So that's like a whole city. You know, that's like a Chino Hills being homeless. Right. So how does that make you feel as a Christian and a believer? Ultimately, I know that 
God is going to be taking care of everything. Like this suffering isn't just being like ignored by God. Like he has an intent to deal with it in his way and that will eradicate it once and for all. And all I can do is, you know, do my part while I'm here on earth to serve and to help and to meet someone's need, even if it's just one day smiling at them and making them feel like, wow, I'm acknowledged. So this is my way of trying to make a difference. And you know, here's the thing, you, you are making a difference. You and all of your friends and all of the volunteers and partners of Fred Jordan Mission. I like to say it like this, like God does have a plan and you're part of God's plan today. Today of sharing hope, sharing love and sharing Christ in action, you're here to serve. I can do a good thing and you can do a good thing and she can do a good thing and we can all do a good thing. But together, Jesus can do extraordinary things as we come together as the body of Christ to serve those in need. Join the conversation by connecting with us on social media. We are on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and more. Visit us at social.fjm.org. It was 1944 when my father, Fred Jordan, came to these streets you know, as I look back and think about it, it was a pretty strategic plan that God had to bring Fred Jordan from Texas here to Fred Jordan Missions. You know, right through these front doors, there have been millions upon millions upon millions, men, women, children, families who have been served, declared and demonstrated the love of Jesus by our staff, by my mom, Willie, and my dad, Fred. And now the legacy continues as we are here continuing to carry that torch, to love those who, as my dad would say, were called the forgotten people of not only this city, but our nation. You see, here in Los Angeles, this is the homeless capital of America. And there are now estimated almost 60,000 homeless in Los Angeles County. It's so sad to see so many on the streets here, but that's where you come in. You see, I can do a good thing and you can do a good thing and others can do a good thing, but together we can do extraordinary things as God continues to use us to reach the lost, the hopeless, the hurting, and the hungry. You know, today at Fred Jordan Mission, we'll be serving food, we'll be serving hope, we'll be sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ with those who come through our doors. We'll also be out here on the streets, just loving on those who live on these streets every day. But you know, there's more to it. This all started in the very beginning. The Bible says in Genesis chapter one that God created the heavens and the earth. It goes on to say that God created man, and that's me and you in his image and his likeness. If we were created in God's image and likeness to love Him, to serve Him, and to follow Him while we're on this earth, then the tragedies that we see every day, not only here on Skid Row in downtown Los Angeles, but all over our country and all over our world are just tragic. Homelessness has become an epidemic here in our city. Just over the last six years, the LA Times and the downtown news say that 75% increase in the homeless population here in Los Angeles, 12% just in the last year. Think about that, 12% increase. I remember when I was here serving Jesus by working with Fred Jordan Mission 30 years ago and the homeless population being around 18 to 24,000. Now there's estimations in the 60,000 number that are living on the streets without hope, without shelter, without a place to go to the bathroom, to shower. You know, it's estimated also that 7% increase in homelessness within the elderly. How would you feel? I know how I would feel. How would you feel if one of your grandparents or your grandparents ended up on the streets? It says in that same article that 24% increase in the teens that are living on the streets and homeless. 6,500 are living in cars and vans. It's a tragedy. One of our city council said, it's one of the worst epidemics that we face 
in America and especially here in Los Angeles today. But then there's Jesus and Jesus is the hope. He's the hope for you. He's the hope for me. He is the hope for all of those who are hopeless on these streets. And I drive by here as I come to minister and work and serve Jesus here at Fred Jordan Mission. I drive by tent after tent, cardboard box after cardboard box, and many that just don't have anything to cover them. You know, I've heard people say, well, hey, Joe, you know, I, I go, I drive around and I look and I see all these great tents and everything. I mean, they're bigger tents than we go camping with. Let me tell you this, this is not a campground. And these people, they're not camping. They're just trying to survive. Other people say, well, Joe, you know, drugs and alcohol, and they want to be on the streets. They want to live there. Let me ask you this. Have you ever had a family member, a loved one that you know that had an accident or an injury that took prescription pills and then got hooked on them? Do you remember a, a youth or a child that maybe went to a party once in high school and got drunk or smoked pot, and then before you know it, they continued on and then they became an addict. We all have a story, and everyone on these streets here has a story. I have a story. My story was growing up with Fred and Willie Jordan, and on the streets of Skid Row, I did not end up. But growing up with Fred and Willie Jordan, who served those on Skid Row, I could have ended up here. I could have been one of those statistics because I got high, I drank, and I lost my way for quite a few years in my life as a young person. But what if Jesus, what if Jesus didn't pull me back? What if I hadn't rededicated my life to Christ over 32 years ago? I would be a mess. But you know what? Jesus took that mess of my life in my 20s and he turned it around and he made a miracle. And that's why I stand here today, serving those that are in need, serving those that are hopeless, serving those who have lost their way to drugs and alcohol. But let me tell you, not everyone who lives on these streets are addicted. I remember meeting a doctor once and he lost his whole family. They all died in a car wreck and all of a sudden, being a doctor, an MD, prestigious, and all of that didn't really matter anymore. And he lost his way and he ended up here. I met a family just six months ago here that lost their home in Alabama to a storm, to a hurricane. They ended up on Skid Row. Two beautiful little girls, a mom and dad, no addictions, no problems like that, just no money. So they came out to California because they thought, we can, we can start a life and yet there wasn't any housing here. There wasn't the resources that they needed and they ended up here on Skid Row. So we're here across the street from the mission, Fred Jordan Mission in downtown Los Angeles. And Jonas, you were just coming by, kids, and here you are. And so, hey, hey we decided to interview you. So where are you from? I'm from uh, Dothan, Alabama. Okay, yeah, and what are, you, what are you doing here, so far away from home? Uh, we came here from, we had a hurricane in October. Okay. So my family migrated here. Okay. Fred Jordan offer a lot of opportunities for a lot of people. And I, I like, I, I've been here, I came here 20 years ago and uh, moved back to Alabama and haven't been back since. Yeah. So when we kind of, so when everything started going up in the uproar for our, for our home, we said, hey, let's go to LA. Yeah. Fred Jordan always offered a, 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 a substantial, um, Help. Help. That's go good. Ahead. Well, can I pray for you real quick okay, and, and, and our, our partners and we'll all pray for you and your family that God will continue to meet your need and bless you. Lord, I thank you for Jonas. I thank you for his life. I thank you for this opportunity that we had to just meet. And I pray, Lord, that you would bless him with a job, the right job. And Father, as he had to leave Alabama because of a hurricane and he brought his family out here, I pray that you'll bless all of them and these beautiful little children that he has, Lord. I pray that you'll meet every need that they have, Father, because you love them, Jesus. And that's very, very clear because you made us all in your image. So thank you for this opportunity to meet him and his family. And again, bless him, Lord, in Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Yeah. That was awesome. 
story after story after story of tragedy. But then there's Jesus. And that's what we do. We serve Jesus every day as we declare and demonstrate the love of Jesus to those in need, homeless, hurting, scared and afraid. The Bible says that the poor will always be with us. And here on the streets of Skid Row in downtown Los Angeles, the poor are everywhere. The homeless population continues to grow and grow and grow. One of our friends from Fred Jordan Mission just waved at me. One who lived on the streets for many years, but now she has a home, she has a job, and God has changed her life because Jesus saves and Jesus delivers and Jesus makes a difference in all of our lives. And that lady I just waved at, Jesus made a difference in her life many, many years ago. You know, it's really, really great to be a part of a legacy and a history like Fred Jordan Mission. You know, for me, it's not a job. For me, it's my calling. It's why I believe God placed me on this earth, is to share Jesus' love with those who are less fortunate, those who have lost their way, those who are hurting and hopeless. And that's one of the mottos of Fred Jordan Mission, hope served here. You know, if it weren't for Jesus saving that lady and another man I just interviewed a little while ago and so many others that I've seen day after day, year after year, all of the years of my life, I don't know that there would be as much hope as I have for these streets. Because if you just go through the motions and you never see lives changed, it would probably be pretty discouraging. The needs here continue to grow, but God continues to show His love to those who live on these streets. The poor will always be with us, and so there'll always be ones who live on our streets, unfortunately. I wish we could just get rid of poverty. I wish we could get rid of homelessness. But as long as there's one on the streets living or hungry or hurting, Fred Jordan Missions will continue to be here serving Jesus by serving the poor. And I'll share more in just a minute. So we're here with Melody today, and it's exciting to have you and a bunch of your friends. Um, I know one of our staff are friends with all of you guys, and you came down. So where are you from, and why'd you come to Fred Jordan Mission today? Um, so my friend Justin is friends with his friend Brandon, and he just asked me if I wanted to volunteer today, and I've actually been looking to volunteer for some time, because I used to volunteer a lot back in high school, and I've been an undergrad for like the last four years. And I was just like, yeah, I'm down to come and help. I don't really know what I'm doing, but I love helping. So yeah. That's what I'm so have you been watching on the news, the homeless population growing? Have you heard about how the homeless in LA just continues to expand? And when you came here, have you ever experienced seeing so many people living on the streets? Sometimes I've traveled the world for the last year. And generally when you travel, you want to go to the nice tourist areas, but you always kind of turn a blind eye to the people who are suffering and it's really hard for me especially like especially in New York actually so I did notice that like it seems like the homeless population is rising a little bit I did hear we get a lot we got a little bit of um, background just earlier before we started prepping the food and he did say that the homeless population increased by 12 percent and that's sad yeah so what are you gonna do today as Honestly, far as serving those in need have you heard offer my kindness, offer like a listening ear, because generally most of the time people just want someone to listen to them. And just having like an open heart and listening to someone is more than enough for them to feel like, okay, someone actually cares about me. And then maybe someone caring, one person caring, one person listening is enough for them to like actually believe in themselves to try to make a change, you know? So having young people like me and my friends be here, I know it means a lot. Yeah, it really does. My dad who started the mission used to say that they're forgotten people that live here, that their families, the society, our country has forgotten about them. But it's not true because God brought my father here and now all of us and he brought you here today so that you could share your love and a smile and you know lend an ear and a voice to those who, who really are lonely. And one of the things we do here is, is serve hope 
And today I think they're going to get a glimmer of hope from you. I hope so. Yeah. So thanks for being with us today. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> and make sure you come back again. I would love to. Yeah. I already like the community. It's like still small or I don't know if this is just how it is it's every so often you have like various amounts of volunteers but I like the atmosphere I can tell you guys genuinely care and with your help and people like Melody will continue to serve Jesus by serving the needy the poor the homeless and the hopeless be a part you can join us too give us a call and join us at Fred Jordan Mission anytime God bless you today as we look all around no matter where we are in life more than ever, we see needs, great needs, hopeless, hurting, desperate people. And what we would typically see on the streets of Skid Row, we are now seeing in every city, every community, and in every neighborhood. Hunger is no respecter of persons. Willie Jordan says, hunger never takes a day off. For those of you during this unprecedented time of history who are doing good, then we ask that you would generously give to those who are not as fortunate. So many from all walks of life are hurting. Will you extend a hand of mercy to help them in their greatest time of need? Your most generous gift is needed. Go online to give fjm.org. Whatever the amount, great or small, your donation is greatly appreciated. because the needs are so great. My mom decided a few years back to put out this brochure called Hope Served Here at Fred Jordan Mission to expand the ability to meet the needs of the growing population of the homeless and the hurting here in downtown Los Angeles. And it's entitled, as my mom and dad are on the cover here, Unto the Least of These. It talks about since 1944, Fred Jordan Missions has served the hungry, the thirsty, the hopeless, and the homeless of our great city, Los Angeles, providing food, clothing, those basic needs for those who live on the streets and are hurting. It talks about how as we serve the least of these, the needs continue to grow and we need to grow with the needs as far as how we can serve more people, how we can accommodate more in our chapel and dining room, how we can preach to more, how we can serve more meals. And I just love our mission. It's always been our mission, and I'm gonna read it to you from the scriptures. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and invite you in or in need of clothes and clothe you? And the king will reply, I tell you the truth, whatever you did, my brother, for the least of these, you did for me. That's the mission of Fred Jordan Mission, to serve the least of these. And Jesus said, as you do it to the least of these, my brother, you do it for me. That's why we're here. That's why we've been here for 75 years, because Jesus called my father Fred, then my mother Willie, and now me and my wife Chris to the streets of Skid Row to serve him by serving others. You see, I've always known that God had a plan for my life, but I tried my own thing many times. But for me, this isn't a job. This is a calling. This is something that God birthed inside of me real deep, real deep inside, and put in my heart to serve those who are less fortunate, who are needy, who are hopeless. And you know, when I talk about it, it's very moving because <clears throat> as a teen and a youth, I never thought that I would do the things that my mother and father did. I always admired it, but I never thought I would be that guy. I never thought I would be called and have a passion for it. But let me tell you, there's nothing more satisfying than to serve somebody a meal who is hungry. There's nothing more satisfying than to hug a lady or a child or a man who hasn't been hugged. There's nothing more gratifying than to let people know 
that Jesus loves you no matter what situation you're living in. So many times those who live here, they tell us and talk to us as Fred Jordan Mission staff and say, people really don't care about me. I'm forgotten, I'm just an outcast. My family doesn't love me. But we're here every day as Fred Jordan Mission to share that number one, Jesus cares about you and it's very clear in his word. We care about you too. Will you continue to stand with Fred Jordan Missions as we reach out to the least of these, declaring and demonstrating the love of Jesus with those who have no hope, no home, and no future if Jesus doesn't intervene. And the great thing is, we know that Jesus came, his word says, to seek and to save that which was lost and that's you and me and all of those who live on the streets here in downtown Los Angeles. Stand with us, pray with us, or if you can, come volunteer and be a part of declaring and demonstrating Jesus' love on these streets in our great city. Or you can become an impact partner and give monthly, or you can write a check and send it in the mail to us. Whatever you do unto the least of these, my brothers, the Bible says, you did for me. God bless you. As I look back over my life, I must say, I've never gone hungry because I've been in need of food or shivered because I've been in need of warm clothing or shelter. I've always had the essentials of life to sustain me. Clean running water, electricity, a warm bed to sleep in. But for many children, men and women, it's sad but true and it isn't right that there are far too many on the streets here of Los Angeles that are struggling, living in poverty without hope, facing life-threatening issues that you and I do not. Today, I'm asking you to join with me in this fight and seeing the lives of children, men, and women changed. Will you help us declare and demonstrate the love of Christ? And would you become an impact partner? I know that together, we can change the lives of thousands starting today. And I'm asking you to give just $33 per month. Think about that, just $33. For most of us, that's hardly a sacrifice. To rescue a child, to feed a mother, or put clothing or shoes on a man. Many of you can do so much more and we need that as well. But for less than a couple dollars per day, for me that would be cutting out just two cups of coffee a week. What luxury would you sacrifice in order to help and give to someone in need? Please go to fjm.org, sign up now, or call us at 844-FJM-FOOD. Become an impact partner today. And if you could do a little something and I could do a little something, well then together we could do something great for changing lives. Go online or call us now to give. God bless you. We will overcome this sorrow. We will see the dawn. Tomorrow we will soldier on down this road as we reach for home. Reach for home. Please. Will you join us in feeding hungry children and their families by phoning today, 844-FJM-FOOD, or donating online, fjm.org. That's fjm.org. Or mail your check to Fred Jordan Mission, P.O. Box 12345, Covina, California, 91722. Please, will you help? Reach for home. The preceding program was sponsored by generous friends and partners of Fred Jordan Missions.